Hi, my name is Ram, and in this episode we'll continue where we left off. We'll implement post request to server, learn about express middleware, and prepare everything to catch errors from server. Before we begin, just a quick note. If you want me to get back to you sooner than later, post your comments and questions in comment section on associated blog post. YouTube comment system is pretty bad. Link in the description. Back to our form component. Here, if client-side validation was successful, we need to dispatch thunk action. So let's define is valid constant. Our form is valid if errors object is empty, and we can use ES6 object keys method, pass errors object and check its length. If it's equal to zero, then it means that form is valid. Now let's check if is valid is true. Then we call this props save game thunk action and pass game data to it, title and cover. Let's get this data from state with const title cover equals this state. This action will return promise and we need to react to it, either redirect to game's list page if everything's ok, or render error messages that server responded with. So in our case, when form is valid, first we want to display loading state. I always prefer to have visual loading indication when user submits form, like disabling submit button or rendering ajax indicator or something like that. And semantic UI has excellent loading state, so let's use it to our advantage. Let's comment out save game call for now. Let's add loading to state and default is false. And then in handle submit, we set state to change loading to true. And after that, let's use class names on our form. So we use class names, we keep static classes UI and form. And after that, we add object and one conditional class in it, loading, which is added if this state loading is true. And that's it. Let's see it in the browser, type something in the fields and submit the form. How cool is that? OK, so now we need to dispatch action. So let's connect this component to Redux. First, we import connect from React Redux and import save game from action. Then go to the bottom of the file and wrap exported component into connect function. First argument is null because we do not need to get any data from global app state. And second argument is object of actions. In our case, just one save game. So going back to handle submit and let's uncomment it. So now we need to define thunk action. Let's go to action.js file and export another function called save game that takes data. It is thunk action, so it returns another function that takes dispatch. And there we make post request with fetch. Fetch returns promise that we also want to return. Now we need to make post request. For that, we provide second argument to fetch function, which is options object. There we specify method to be post, set body to be sent to server. Fetch can only use string or form data as body, no JSON on JavaScript objects, so we need to convert our data JavaScript object into string with JSON stringify data. Another very important thing to remember when using fetch, you must specify everything. In our case, we make JSON request, so we need to specify header content type. So we add headers object and specify content type to equal application slash JSON. Okay, now in the browser we can make requests and we see that it works as it should. But now we hand from UI point of view because we don't have this endpoint yet and server response with error. That server problem as well. We want our server to be JSON API server, so we always expect it to respond with some JSON, and that's not what happens in Express by default. So let's add special 404 middleware function that will respond with JSON so we can handle it on client. So let's go to server file. There we introduce last in chain middleware. So what is middleware, you ask? Well, imagine it as a queue of functions which are called one after another. Each of these middleware functions either pass execution further or stops it. In Express application, all routes we define are essentially middlewares. So URL is checked. If there is no match, execution continues, and next route in chain is checked, etc. until proper route is found. In that case, route code does its business and pops out from execution with res.json call. So if we define middleware after all our routes, it will be run only if no other routes stopped execution, making it essentially not found case. So we define new middleware function that takes request, response and next arguments. We can omit next because that's the last middleware function in the chain. Inside we respond with 404 status 
and JSON with global error, something went wrong. Oh, I hate this kind of messages and applications. Don't ever do it. So let's add some humor. Still working on it. Please try again later when we implement it. Oh, that's much better. Now users will love our product. Phew, we did it. We learned a little bit about middlewares in Express. But why? Well, because that's a good thing to know, and this exact concept is used in Redux middlewares as well, so I hope that was a time well spent. Now we need to catch it in client and render errors in our component. So let's go to actions.js file. To our fetch call, let's chain then, and we use named function handle response. Later we can extract it into separate file and reuse it for every such request. But for now, let's define it on the top of this file. So we define function handle response, this function takes response argument. Then we check if response is OK. It means that response status code is 200 something. In this case, we'll convert response to JSON and it will return promise. In case of error, we initialize new error object and pass response status text there. Then we add response to this object and then we throw this error. Now back to the form component. We define then and pass two arguments. First function is the success one and second function to catch error we just threw. Here we get response, invoke JSON function. This function returns another promise, so we use another then and take errors from it. And then set state with errors and set load into false. And let's render error message if we have global errors. So let's add it below header. So we check if this.state.errors.global is true. And in that case, we render div with class name UI negative message. And inside of it, we render p tag, inside of which we render this.state.errors.global. So let's try it out in the browser. And it's much better. Wow, that was a long side note, sorry for that. But let's take a break here and continue the next episode. If you found this episode useful, please support my work by liking it, subscribing to this channel and sharing it with your friends and colleagues. If you have any questions, leave a comment below or preferably on my blog and follow me on Twitter to get updates. Thank you very much for your time and have a great day.